This is a tutorial on arithmetic series. Before we can talk about arithmetic series, we have to know what an arithmetic sequence is. An arithmetic sequence is just a sequence of numbers, or numbers listed in order, that have this special relationship where each number increases or decreases by the same amount through addition. So our example sequence here, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, to go from our first term 2 to our second term 4, this would be an addition of 2. To go from 4 to 6, that's another addition of 2. To go from 6 to 8, again, another addition of 2. And from 8 to 10, another addition of 2. Because we're adding the same number, in this case 2, each time, that makes this an arithmetic sequence. Now an arithmetic series, then, is just an arithmetic sequence where all the terms are added together. So if we took this arithmetic sequence and we turned it into a series, we would just take 2 and add it to 4 and then add it to 6 and then add 8 and then add 10. So again, arithmetic series is just an arithmetic sequence where all our terms are added together. Now there are two different types of arithmetic series. There are finite and infinite arithmetic series. Now a finite sequence is when we have a sequence of numbers related like an arithmetic sequence, but there is a final number or a final term in that sequence. In this example we have 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. These all increase through an addition of 3 over and over again. But our sequence ends at 15. 15 is the last term. If we were to turn this into a series, it would look like 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15. But 15 is the final term. So this is a finite series. An infinite sequence and an infinite series are denoted by the fact that there's these three periods at the end. Here are sequences 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. But the fact that we have these three periods at the end, that means that this sequence goes on forever. There's another term after the 10 that's just not listed. This sequence goes on to 12, 14, and then 16, and then 18, and it keeps going up by the same amount until you reach infinity. Same thing happens with an infinite series. We have 2, and then we add 4, and then we add 6, and then we add 8, and then we add 10, and then we would be adding 12, and then we would add 14, and so on until we were adding infinity. So a finite series is one with a final term. An infinite series is one that continually goes on forever. Now since finite arithmetic series have a final term, that means we can find the sum of a finite arithmetic series. Here we have an example series 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15. We can add all these numbers together. 3 plus 6 would be 9. Add 9, that would be 18. Add 12 to 18, and you'll get 30. Add 15 to 30, and this will become 45. Now, if we had many more terms in this series, this could get very difficult to add all the terms, or at least it would take a long time if this series had 20 or more terms. So instead, we can always use this formula, the sum of a finite arithmetic series with n amount of terms, remember n is the amount of terms, and in this example n would be 5, that sum is equal to n over 2, again where n is the number of terms in the series, and n over 2 is multiplied by a1 plus an. Well a1 is just the first term in our series. a n, since n is the number of terms in our series, then a n would be the last term in our series. So in our example series here, 3 would be a 1, and 15 would be a n, or you can think of that as a 5. So let's try using this formula to do this summation here for this example series. Our sum 
is equal to n over two, but n is five, because there's five terms in this series. So five over two times a1, which is our first term, which is three, added to a n, or a5, because it's the last term in our series, so 15. So our sum then is equal to five halves times three plus 15, or 18. Now 18 divided by two would be nine, nine times five is 45. So our sum is 45, which is exactly what we got when we added these all up the long way. So whenever you have a finite arithmetic series, you can use this formula to find its total or its sum. Now if this is an infinite arithmetic series, then you can't use this formula because it's infinite and you'll always be adding another term and then another term. So there's no final sum to an infinite arithmetic series. All right, the last thing we have to talk about when we talk about arithmetic series is summation notation. Summation notation looks like this. It's usually indicated by this crazy looking E. This is the symbol for summation. Now typically, there is a formula that comes after this summation sign. And when we use a summation for an arithmetic series, we always follow it with the explicit formula for the sequence. Above our summation sign is the upper limit, and below it is the lower limit. Now when we're talking about arithmetic series, our upper limit is the number of terms, or n, in our series. And the lower limit tends to be 1 for the first term in our series. So let's try using summation notation to create the notation for this example series. Here our series is 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14. Now the first step is to take this series and try to write the explicit formula for the sequence of these numbers. Now to go from 2 to 5, this is an increase of 3. To go from 5 to 8, this is an increase of 3. To go from 8 to 11, another increase of 3. And from 11 to 14, again, an increase of 3. That means that our common difference for this sequence is 3. Our first term is 2, so our a1 would be 2. And that means our explicit formula for this sequence would be a n is equal to 2 plus n minus 1 times 3. Now we take that this formula, and we plug it in here in front of our summation sign. Below our summation sign goes a 1, because we're starting with the first term of our series. And above it goes the last term, or the number of the last term, which in this case there are five terms in the summation, so above it goes a 5. So if we were to write this series in summation notation, we would say that the sum of 2 plus n minus 1 times 3 from 1 to 5. Or sometimes you'll see n is equal to 1 below the summation to indicate that n is what's changing as we do the summation. So again, our summation notation for this series would be 5, our summation sign, n is equal to 1, and then 2 plus n minus 1 times 3. So now let's try using summation notation in the other direction. Let's find out what this notation is equal to, or the sum of this notation. If I have 5 is the upper bound of my notation, and n is equal to 1, my formula is 4n minus 6, and this whole notation means that we're going to take 4 times 1, because that's the first number in our summation, minus 6. We're going to take this whole thing, we're going to add it to 4 times 2, 
minus 6. And we're going to add that to 4 times 3 minus 6. And we're going to add that to 4 times 4 minus 6. And then finally, we're going to add that to 4 times 5 minus 6. We stop at 5 because our upper bound here, or the number above our summation sign, is a 5. Now 4 times 1 minus 6, this is minus 2. We're adding that to 4 times 2 minus 6. 4 times 2 is 8 minus 6, that's a positive 2. We're adding that to 4 times 3 is 12, minus 6 is 6. We're adding that to 4 times 4 is 16 minus 6, that's 10. And then we're adding that to 4 times 5, which is 20, and then minus 6 is 14. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0, plus 6 is 6, plus 10 is 16. 16 plus 14 is 30. So this summation is equal to 30. Now there's a faster way of completing this problem. Because this is an arithmetic series, and we want to find the summation of this arithmetic series, we can use the formula s is equal to n over 2 times a1 plus an. Using this formula, all we need is the number of terms in our series, which is 5, our first term, and then our last term. Well, I can find our first term. I just plug in 1 for n in this formula. So our first term, a1, is equal to 4 times 1 minus 6. 4 minus 6 is negative 2, so a1 is equal to negative 2. We can find the last term in our series because there's five terms in the series, so if I plug in 5 for n, I'll find out that my last term is just 4 times 5 minus 6. That's 20 minus 6. That's 14. So my last term is 14. And now I can plug these into this formula. Our summation is equal to n over 2. Now n is 5, so 5 over 2 times our first term, negative 2, plus our last term, 14. Negative 2 plus 14 is 12. So our summation is equal to 5 over 2 times 12. 5 over 2 times 12 is 30. So our summation is 30. And that's exactly what we got the first time. So now that we know how to use summation notation, that completes the tutorial on arithmetic series.